The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here. Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648. And just to mention again, I'm going to be doing my webinar Tuesday, six, 5 o'clock to 6.30, the 19th. And it's about many of the techniques that I discussed here, um, which really are kind of fundamental to my, to my way of uh, analyzing markets. And uh, some of them are just nearly tools that you would add to your tool chest. In other words, if you're using any platform, doesn't matter what, which platform it is, you must have the MACD, you must have the stochastic, you must have even on balance volume, moving averages. Those are all part of the equipment right there. And I'll, I'll be showing you how to use them. One of the things that I like to do is, uh, let me just briefly go through this again. In the Chapman Wave technique, we try to identify a low bar that's important that can take you um, to at least four higher peaks, A, B, C, D. When you get to that fourth highest peak at D, other things can happen. It's where you have some caution because you could recycle higher or you could actually stall, have a deep uh, correction. You'll see I mean, yeah, in the corner, you can see the chart. There's the dollar. No, sorry, that's the Dow back in September the 12th at 27,306. Next day, made a peak D with a little doji candle. Pull back to 25,743. I also like to look at the arch formation and the cup formation. You can get a combination of a straight line down and an arch that takes out the left side low. That's called the dreaded H because it goes much lower unless the technicals are really improving to give you a new brand new buy signal. So it's always a warning. And the same thing here at the top where you go from the left side high uh, after a straight line move to the top. And you make a cup formation. If you break out to the top side with good technicals, you can keep going higher. Basically, that's how you're looking at the peak A, and then you take out that peak A by one penny to start leg B. That's your, look, there's your um, invert, uh, reversed Y. There's another reversed Y. Anyway, so those are the simple techniques. Now, what we're going to do is... Um, let me just put this across here. Okay. So in this particular uh, pattern right now, one of the reasons why um, I, I wanted to go short is that there's a pattern that's been working for quite some time now where the market makes a high at a, a D or a little higher, but the letter D, and then it goes sideways for a moment. The big clue that we found now, I found at least, is that if it breaks to a new high, within the high of that rectangle, you got to be careful because especially if the technicals are good because it just keep, could keep recycling higher. Look, this isn't so much in points uh, when you're going from the 27,500 to today's high of 27,954. Um, yeah, 400 or 500 points. That's a lot of points, but just in the, in the spectrum of what you're looking at having come from 25,743, this isn't uh, in it. So far, it isn't all that much. But what's really important is the nine-period exponential moving average, that green line, held the support. And it looked as if today, if today there was a turn down in the market and you start to break the nine-period moving average of 27,677 now, it was actually just, it was a little lower yesterday. It's higher because of this big move up. Um, that would have suggested now finally you could start to test the uh, 14 period, the black line, the 14 period exponential moving average well, of 27,547. If it doesn't happen, you have to say, okay, what were the things that you were looking at that were positives and are still positives? And one of the things I always say is a flat stochastic at 93, 95% is really good. The only way you're going to get a turn down after that is if you can identify using either the Chapman wave notations or some other way, maybe a little doji candle and a reversal. You can identify that there's something going on that is going to make the price deteriorate. And what I've been saying for a little while is that you're going to have a five to 700 point down move before you even get this green line, the nine period moving average to cross negative under the 14 period moving average. 
But the on balance volume, the blue line, was suggesting it's overbought. Whenever it gets to this particular level, the upside gets a real different. You can see we've taken one, two, three, four, five, five days where it just stalled right in this area of 27,790, 27,806. And today's a big break. So this is very important because it was saying, and I. We are short. We might not be short for for much longer. We've then uh, almost a penny of being stopped out of our die. It's not, uh, you know, it was a position that was based on the technicals as they were looking. Today's break to the upside with a gap, um, that that's really good action compared to what could have happened if we were pulling back. And if we were down 150 points right now from yesterday's close, it would have said, yep, correct, you're in the rectangle formation. A rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. This is technical Friday, so I'm going to be a little technical here. But what's really important about this is that it's going to take quite a, while, quite a bit of price movement or time and with lower highs and lower lows to get this MACD to cross negative. It's going to take the same thing to get the stochastic, when the stochastic goes flat, let me see if I've got other examples of this. I really want to, try. yeah, there it is. So there it's flat. And the MACD was good, and it, it was a shorter time period. And then you got a pullback, and it, it just hung around, hung around. It didn't break out of the 26,907 level from June until suddenly there was this big spike that took it to the high of July. Fortunately, we were able to short uh, within seven points of the high using this particular method. We were expecting the D. Um, and so it took a long time. The flat stochastic actually went lower and lower, but the MACD didn't really cross negative just briefly. And then it went to that D. And then after that, it turned down. So it's important to recognize that, that a flat stochastic in the 95, 93, 95% here can stay flat for a long time. And to get it to, to decrease, and then to go under 80%, because I always believe over 80% is very good, under 80% says, OK, now you're starting to see some weakness. To do that, we would have to go all the way down to the 27,420, 27,360 level. And so far, I don't see any, any news at this particular point that's really going to do that. So we'll see if this is going to be a sideways consolidation with a breakout now, or we whether go back into the consolidation phase. All right, with that said, the weekly, I had a question, a good question came in from GT. Why am I not calling this leg B a peak F? Since there was the E, and that was an A, that was a gray A because it was underneath that level. So it counts, but it, it's not as important as if it's blue. Uh, why am I calling it a B and not an F? Well, there's three reasons. I've called it for a B for a while. One of the reasons is that in time, we've used up so much time. We've had the cup, a cup-shaped formation that went to the top in July, had another bottom in August that went to a cup formation. I keep forgetting to put the date in here. Uh, September the, um, 30th, the week of the September the 13th. Pulls back, makes yet another cup formation. This is suggesting to me that we're making higher highs, higher lows. It's just been consistently doing that since the June low. Even though the, the retracements have been deep, I, even if I called it F, I'm not looking at more than 26,500-ish or maybe a little lower on a worst-case basis just at this particular point. So I think I'm going to, I'm comfortable right now calling it B in a buy mode and a D in the monthly. I'll be back, Basil Chapman, Tiger Admissions Hour. And we'll go through the app. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So now we've got the S&P in leg F, and this has done a recycle. This is a tough one because the technicals are still good. I got to give it. I have to be conservative in my in my wave count. I don't want to be aggressive here by saying F slash B. But wow, this. I mean, the way the stochastics holding a 91 percent on balance volume is really high. Usually, I mean, I can go back and I'll show you that these there were serious tops. Uh, look, on balance volume right there. What do we get? We get that rare G. Top at 30.21 and the S&P back in September, the week of the 19th. Here it is, a top right there. That was a D peak D at 30.27.98. Uh, that was in uh, the first, uh, what was it, uh, end of July. And you've got May 29.49 peak D. And look, there it is. So this is, look how high it is. This is really unusual. We are. On the one hand, it's really good because this is on balance volume. Volume, volume has been accumulating because there have been so few down days. So you add the total. This is a running total, a total of the volume on up days. You add it, to, you add it to down days, you subtract. It's very simple. Um, but at the same time, uh, this is where it's exactly the point. This is one another reason why I thought there was a good chance we were making some kind of a top. Um, hey, what can I say? This is, this is what we're doing right now. Um, and as legs see a nice breakout in the S&P, so I, I got an email saying, the S&P 500 has closed above its 10-day moving average for 26 consecutive days. Ah, that's why the unbalanced volume is so good and the MACD. Well, this is actually the second streak of at least 26 closes above above in 2019. This is the first year that's happened since 1985. That is the same year Nintendo was released in the United States. Uh, that was a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I should remember that well with my son, Nintendo. Uh, funny, that's his language. It's kind of what he's doing in real life, uh, software. Um, all right. So uh, thank you for that. And I'll answer some of those other questions as we get. Is this an exhaustion uh, options expirations? Is this an exhaustion gap up? I, we won't know for a little while. But let me just show you something. Uh, I missed this. I'm sorry, subscribers. Although it didn't really change any of my calls because they were based on other things that kind of coincided. But look, 
here in the uh, in the uh, trend gauge, we had trend gauge reading yesterday of 2.38. I didn't realize it would be so high. 2.38, and um, that says that you should get a 9 to 12 point e mini futures uh, within two days. Certainly, we got that. It was four days ago. Same thing. So these, I, I, I missed them for some reason. I've just been so busy. I forgot to look at my. A trend gauge. So now what we're looking at is in the 120 minute Dow chart, we've got a little doji at a peak E, and a, uh, you can see it right there. And the MACD did turn up, but the, and the stochastic is at 91%. What happens now? Really important. All right, let's get back to the S&P. So the S&P, at this point, make it simple. 3088 is the nine-period moving average support. 3075 is the 14-period uh, exponential moving average support. And you're getting the M-shaped pattern in the uh, MACD, which says, normally, I'd be expecting some kind of a pullback. Not, I'm not talking about a massive crash. I'm just saying a pullback, a digestive phase. In uh, starting next week, for uh, within by Tuesday, that's uh, that's what I'd be looking at anyway. Okay, so the QQQ one two three. Here we go. QQQ a little doji candle. It had a high today of two two point eighty all time high. NAGD is good. You can see that little turn up. It's called the dolphin pattern. Um, it says that the right. M-shaped pattern, the right little arch, how long it lasts is going to be very important. Stochastic's really good at 92%, and the on-balance volume started to pull back a little bit. Leg E, uh, A, I didn't put this in here correctly. I keep taking it for granted that people know what I mean. No, A, B, I'm going to call this a C. I'm not going to call it an E just now. Maybe it will be an E, but I'm not going to change anything now other than to say I'm calling it C because it really is very strong. Now, you can still have a pullback from the, in a, at a peak C uh, between 195 and 193, and there's still nothing wrong with the whole thing. Stochastics at 95, 96%, and the MACD is just expanding now. That usually leaves a little room on the upside to go. Legs seen in the monthly chart, very good. IWM, same thing. Now, I had questions about long-term trend lines. Yeah, look at this trend line. It goes all the way from 2009, where it wasn't the start of it, but the low at 34.26 in the IWM was the start. That was in March of 2009. And then it rallies all the way to a peak D at 86.82. There it starts your trend line. And then it pulls back and creates a bottom trend, a beautiful channel. I love the way channels work. Prices stay in that channel. How they do that is just incredible. I have a theory about it. I could never prove it. It's just my in my mind, I've got a theory. And basically, it says enthusiasm runs out when it gets to the top in the same percentage uh, as it does each time. Look, the same kind of move up, bumps into resistance, bumps into resistance. Um, but how do you measure that? And then it pulls back, breaks the support at 93.64 in February of 2006 and runs all the way to 173.39. August of uh, 2018 plummets down to, that's a real plummet, 50, 50 points to 125.81. And that was December. And then it rallies, and now it's making the arch formation that's going sideways in an M pattern. Good action. It should take out, it should have a test of a 111 right here. So it should have a test of the high that was made right there. That was in May of 161.11. Today's high is 159.29, getting close. But this one's really struggling. And this this is this could be a very positive Chapman wave. Uh, in, this is yeah the falling X pattern, although it looks more like a channel, right there. Uh, that could be very positive if we get to 159.70 by Monday or Tuesday. Then it could retest the 160.46 high of was it the third of no the fifth of November. All right, let's go on. Are there any questions? No. Here's something that I think is very important. The IYT has started, it really is, it hasn't confirmed anything in the Dow going to all-time highs or the others. It's at 196.08, the transportation index, up 94 cents, but it's really struggling. It can't get out of there. It will, but not now. It's going to, at least it's not doing it now. In November, this trend line resistance, it needs to break into the 198 area to say, hey, I... I'm doing great, but that's not good enough. It has to break really above the high that was made on the 7th of 201.48. I'm going to type that in so I can remember it. Uh, I don't have to remember it. 
All right, so so far there's not really a confirmation in the transports. A um, couple of things that we want to look at here. So I want to look at gold. Uh, I did Larry's show this morning. Sorry, subscribers. I, I think I forgot to mention it, but Larry's show at 9 o'clock did a whole bunch of things, commodities, etc. So what we're looking at here is gold has a rectangle in, in the weekly chart that basically says between 1542 and uh, 14, let's call it 65, that's a big support level and resistance level. But I've got another one, a narrower one, that says treat this like it was um, basically, if I can do that here. Yeah, let me get rid of this because now it's unnecessary. This is like a fulcrum, like a propeller shaft. This is the midpoint. You go above it, you come back in. You go below it, you come back in. And then you get stuck and you keep trying to go below it and holding, but you can't. It makes lower lows. So this whole area here of 1495 to 1505, that's going to be really important resistance to try to take out the gold. Right now, it looks like it's just continuing to consolidate. I'll be back to talk more about silver. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So let me talk about this again. I'm going to be doing a webinar on Tuesday uh, at, at 6 o'clock. That's the 19th, uh, 5 o'clock, I keep saying, saying 5 o'clock to 6.30. It's an hour and a half. 
Talk about, look at this peak D. I keep saying peak D. So look at this peak D, the N N NVTA. So uh, I think it was, was it Greg who had that? Um, no, Jason, I think. Yeah, Jason, I think, had this. Uh, NVTA yesterday, we were talking about it. I said, looks good, good starter position. Nothing I would change in his, uh, in his trading pattern right there. Um, and I said, it, it looks like it should hold here, but you really want to see a nice move up to the pink a weekly uh, nine period moving average, and then maybe even touch the uh, 14 at some point in the next uh, week and a half. Well, today it did it. It's up a dollar fifty at 18.89, up 8.6 percent. Nice eye, uh, uh, Jason. Good, good, good rationale. Good entry. Good, good, good um, way to do this. And now I can't remember if I said to you to add if it go, goes one penny above A. At 1812, I, that was my thinking, and I have no idea if I actually said that to you. But that would be my usual uh, positioning um, if it's if it's acting very well. And that's certainly when it gapped up, it opened at 1804, when it closed yesterday at 17.39. Uh, um, that would have been it. So I hope you're, you're, you're doing, congratulations. You are doing well. Uh, a good trade. I had a question if I re review some of what I looked at yesterday. So just before I go on and go to the dollar, etc., they're not doing all that much. Look, SPLK, I think Splunk comes out with earnings. I don't know when it comes out with earnings. But 118.76 up a dollar 77. What I said is, the question was, what would I, what, what would you do? And I said. Either you put a stop in a little lower down, but I didn't like the action at all at this particular point. But if you're in for a longer term position, uh, let's just wait and see how it handles. I think I said the 116 to 114 area. Today's low is 115.33, but I didn't like it at all. This is a good turnaround, but that weekly chart still looks very poor. So whatever happens in the, whatever the earnings is, let me have a look if the earnings came out today. I know it's real close. It's either. Uh, earnings, let's see. News, this is not very good. This is on TradeStation. They have a great platform, but they don't always. Okay. Splunk option alert, November at 1.18 oh, calls. 118 calls, sweep. Woohoo, sweep. Cleveland Research downgrades Splunk. Oh, that was yesterday. All right, so I don't know what that means. Splunk option, oh, alert. Well, that's maybe because of earnings. So, okay. So I'm not sure when the earnings are coming out. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm looking at here is um, NVIDIA. We had a whole whole session on NVIDIA, not a whole, but a whole segment. I said, a um, couple of people asked me about it, and I said, for the people who have it, and someone said they've got quite a good profit in NVIDIA, I said, I would, if just because you've asked me the question and because they have earnings, I'm going to recommend take a little bit off. Your core position, if it's from much lower down, you'll be able to handle that. But I'd rather see you take a little bit off and have it spike six or seven points because there's fantastic earnings news yesterday and say, oh, I've still got my big chunk. But I have taken a little bit off because of money management. Then to have you say, now what do I do? Take more than a little bit off? What? Now you don't have to do anything. It's a 205. It had a high today of. 211.78. The um, most recent high was, in fact, 211.86. And it's just fascinating to me how these spikes occur, and they can come within pennies of the previous price, and then they can do something else. In this case, what happened was it plummeted down to 200.64. Now it's come back five points. So people are still deciding because some of the others are apply, applied material, AMAT has had a very good session. It's helping the SMHs and it helps some of the others. Although I'm a little disappointed. The SMHs are up $1.57 at 134.51. Um, I would say that it should be up two and a half to three and a half at this point if it's such great news. It's not bad. It's up at an all-time high. I'm just a little surprised it isn't up much more. So here's the other thing. NVIDIA, leg D in the weekly, and that's the reason why I said you know, you've got 211.70 last week as a high. You've got 211.86. If there's a sharp turn down this coming week, I get a two bush up and wave two bar reversal. And that says, give me a little careful because you could come down to the next most important doji or gap or um, moving average. In this case, 194 is the weekly. That's really far away. But you could come down to the low of, um, they fill the gap today, they fill the gap. 203.89 was the gap uh, high of the first 
of November and the next day 204.92. That's a dollar ten um, gap. So that's that's already full. Okay. So um, yeah. So we'll deal with that. We'll have a look at it again. Just it's done everything you wanted. Still holding very nicely. If you're in long term in Nvidia. I, I, at this particular point, other than take that position off that I said, just just to alleviate some worry or pressure, um, stay in that that way. I don't know if I shorted right now. I think it is a potential for a pullback. I don't know about shorting. Next question I had was, could I look at tree because it was holding? And I said it's just doing okay. Don't do anything. It's had a peak D. Yeah, there it is. Down at 370. It's down 0.46 down 0.12%. Um, no, I'm still, I feel the same way. I think it is consolidating. Just give it a little more time. The, the, the weekly chart at peak C is suggesting that you could get a D. So um, keep it there. Next question I had was, um, yeah, so in the den, I had a question about uh, could I look at SVM or Ego? So on my, I have a list for my subscribers. I, I put them in just to say these are the ones that are coming up that could have, I call them screamers, because even though they're in leg D and they've really gone higher, they just keep going to the upside and they're low price and they're great for trading. I, I don't know how to add it to my newsletter as just really day trades. I don't want to do that, but there have been really quick moves to the upside. I had this. I didn't. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it. It was on my list, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the uh, uh, in my newsletter the other day. It's SVM, and I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, wait, silver's acting quite poorly. Gold is acting so weird. What the heck is this? And I saw it right here on this day. And that was at the close. It was actually intraday. I saw it in my scan um, on the 12th of November. SVM is silver core metals. That's the silver core metals. The metals are not doing all that great right now. What's going on here? Well, I still don't know what's going on here. Other than I was going to say, let's let's try to get it on the 12th. I thought I'd put it in. I had something else instead. Um, and I was going to say, let's, let's get it on the dip. It closed at 4.58. I would have said, let's let's try to get it, uh, you know, under the um, 4.52, 4.50 level. But we would have missed it because the next day the low was 4.56. And it screamed again. And then the next day I'm looking at it and, and, and it does it again. And you, this is called the floating letter. I'm going to teach this on Monday, on Tuesday when I do my webinar for subscribers. It's a floating letter. I'll just review it. Some people know it very well, but other people will be fresh. So it's a, it remains a leg, a leg D, a leg D, a leg D, a leg D. Boom. If there's a, if a, there's a lower high below today's high, which so far is 493 tomorrow, that becomes a peak D. So it stays a leg until it makes a peak. And in the weekly chart, it's gone to a leg D. I still don't know what they do. And the monthly chart, this is actually new leg C. Isn't that incredible? That's a screamer. Look, this is a single leg that went from $3.90 maybe, $3.91, all the way to today's uh, $4.93. That's a, wow, one and a half point boot. That's like a 3% in days. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So SL, SVM, Silver Core Metals, doing absolutely great. Uh, we had one in, in the newsletter, just very briefly, BDLP. B, Ballard Power, BLDP, um, which I followed, but uh, it, it didn't do quite what I wanted when I wanted it. And now it's screaming to the upside. Look at that, $6.88. These six, seven, eight dollar stocks have been absolutely fantastic. We had one just the other day, which um, LGF. Dot a, uh, which we got out of, we got in nicely and had a great day. It went from seven, our entry point 762, it went to 792 in one day, but then it pulled back just a little bit more. And my only concern was for months, it's been going from the 36.48 high in January of 2018 down to the most recent of October of 765, October the 30th. And I didn't want to see another leg A fail. This is really good action. Now it means that part of the Lionsgate Entertainment Core, A shares, movies, etc., that's all part of the media section. Uh, and they're, on, they're doing well. I mean, look at Disney. Disney is on fire. Well, I wouldn't like to say on fire. It's, it's done fantastically. 156.63 was the high. Now things are going to pull back a little bit, but it isn't leg D in the monthly chart. Uh, I'm going to be watching this one closely. Might have got a little too carried away with that move three days ago. Uh, that's the move on Friday. Was that? No, whatever day it was, today's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday, where everything was just meandering, and at the end of the day, there was a rally, and then this horrible failure at about something like maybe 2, 2.30 or 3 o'clock, and then all of a sudden, it just turns around and screams up because of Disney, the Dow was helped. Um, so, yeah, that's what's happening here. That's why I've been saying that the Dow is such a perfect vehicle in many ways because it has such a big, it's not the Dow Industrials, it's the Dow 30, really. And now it's in a different thing altogether, and um, it, it's, it's just showing a completely different uh, Perspective. It really is the world. It's the it's the economy. It's everything. It's got got in there. So uh, up near at, at record highs. I must admit, this is very good action for the Dow. A question I had about. Um, let's see what was where was it? Where was it? Uh, leg E. Um, yeah. So I had a question about some of the ones that we look at, like Caterpillar. You see, the industrials are stalling now. They've had a fantastic move. So Caterpillar is up today, 226 at 145.75. But it's it, it's had a fantastic move. Now it's taking a breather. Uh, Deer, 
Deer is, same thing, makes a peak F uh, five days ago, and now it's taking a bit of a breather. And this is the thing. This is that rotational upside correction where as some group starts to falter, another group takes over, like you do very often on the downside, which keeps prices even without breaking down. So we, we it's had a tough time breaking out, even though the new highs, it isn't really vertical yet. But it's because of this rotational aspect. So Deer, uh, the other one's Triple M. Triple M is having a, where did I put it? Right here. Triple M is 3M company is up. 1.59 and 172 is also hit the 200 period moving average. Peak E is pulling back here. Um, and UTS, my, one of our favorites here, we did own it for a long time and we're out of it, but now it's at an all time high. 149.37 leg E, leg D in the, the uh, uh, weekly and only a leg C in the monthly. Big breakout. These are all very good positives. And then you've got some that have been weak. So, um, you know, this is US Steel. It's had a very good move, but yet it hasn't broken out. When you finally see these deep cyclicals like the steels, like the SLX, let me put that in, that is the index itself. Look, it's just stuck in a range. The weekly chart doesn't look that great. But when these things finally start to move, I'm going to be talking about that on Tuesday. What I'm anticipating, which sectors will really perk up in the next uh, phase, which will go into the beginning of the year, that's going to be really important. So I, I wanted to mention that, and there was something else I'm thinking out loud here, because I said, oh, high-grade copper. High-grade copper uh, is up today, but it's really struggling. Made that peak E in the Chapman wave, went under the 200-period exponential moving average, and now look where it is. That weekly chart is really not good. If, if copper can get to the 2.80s, 2.86 area is really the 200 period moving average at some point in the next six to eight weeks. That's going to be a different thing altogether. That'll say the world markets, the, the world economies are starting to improve. And I do I have time for this now? Yeah, I mean, just do this real quickly. Here I have my two. This is what I show my subscribers on the weekend. I'll start preparing and sending out charts to my opening call uh, subscribers. And that'll be. Um, Here's the triple yields. The white is the 30-year TYX yield, 30-year uh, T bond. This is the 10-year T note yield, the brown TNX. And the five-year FVX is right there, the cyan. Uh, that's the five-year T note yield. And you can see they had a big move off the low. But what a move from 34.55 in the 30-year, 3.45% down to the low that was made I forgot to type that in. I should have typed it in. Uh, right there. The low that was made um, in August uh, 1905, 1905 in August, 1.905. I mean, what a move, huh? So um, double check. Did I look at the right thing? Can that be? Yeah, well, that's amazing. I keep forgetting that it was such a big move. Yeah. This is a big move. So um, that's important. And yeah, you've got the wood, the Global Timber and Forestry ETF on the right, upper right. Um, it's in a rectangle formation, made a slightly low, low below the 55s low back in uh, December. It ran up to the 67-ish uh, area. And then it went down to 52.75. Now it's in leg B on the upside. A failed before. Will B fail? Well, we don't know yet. If there's no new high this week, new recovery high, this will be peak B. But look, there's the home builders with low interest rates like this. They've done very well, but they've been stalling for about three weeks. So I'm watching this closely because at the Philadelphia HGX housing index, if uh, at 356% right now, if it can break into the 361s next week, as yields remain low, that'll be good. But that would mean that the TLT is rising. And if the TLT is rising, normally you would expect that the uh, market is, is getting, it doesn't like this uncertainty of um, stocks, because when stocks get volatile and drop, uh, money goes into bonds. So this is going to be very important, how, how, how we come out of it. In the TLT, trading at 137.91, a big move above, I would just put it this way, above this trend line, going into the 139.60 area, 140.20. That says, hey, be careful. Bonds could now rally again as yields pull back. And if, if it's the other way around, that 136.54 low that was taken out at 134.45 last week, 
be careful because then these things can go down. The, the TLT could go quite a bit lower and yields could go higher, and that might impact the housing market negatively. Just trying to give a bigger picture. Silver, I just want, didn't finish. I don't think silver is like gold. It went underneath that the, the weekly low yesterday, uh, last week, was lower than the low that was made at, at the 1st of October. And that's that H pattern, the dreaded H in the Chapman Wave methodology. So we've come back above that fractionally. Um, I need to watch this closely because if it gets back into the range, then you can have a bounce to about the 17.40, 17.50 area in silver. This is going to be an important moment. It's come back from the low of today, and that's good. Same with gold. Gold is now down five. It's improving, but that too has gone from underneath last week's low. Now it's trying to get back into the rectangle formation. Basil Chapman does up 161. S&P's up 18. I'll be right back as soon as these messages are finished. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hello, folks. Don't forget, Steve comes up. Dave White comes up. You've got uh, Tom O'Brien. I'll be back with Tom a little later on. Okay, this is what we're looking at here. A question just came in. Uh, Greg, morning, Basil. Would you look at ABPN for me? I sold half of my position at 56.98, and we'd like to add back. Wow, very nice. The high, in fact, was just over 60, 62. Good, good positioning. I would like to add back. My core position is at 36.90. Where would you add back? Thanks, Greg. So, Greg, this is what I'd be looking at. ABPN is uh, uh, APN core 
A shares. I know we spoke about this some time ago. So it's pulled back sharply, and now it's walking the 200 period moving average. So I don't think you you need to have a, to be in a rush here. But what I would say to you is this: you see the way it keeps hugging 41.25. You're in a nice position. I would do this. I'd have two positions. I'd have two mental uh, aspects to it. One is, I'd say the 200 period at 41.25 is like a magnet. So even if it goes below, it's bound to retouch that, unless there's a gap down because of just real bad news. So I would have one place to go at 41.26. And there I would have maybe a, a two point stop because you've had a really good gain just to, to start your position. That's all. Just have it in. That's all. But if it starts to uh, move towards the, it's a, the high today is 43.81. If it goes to 44.08, I would just nibble. I'd start a little position there, only because that's the 14 period moving average and it hasn't held it yet. But if it holds it, there's a good chance it could have one quick pop towards the 46.26 high of the 4th of November. And then you can start working around that and say, well, have I lost that position I wanted at 40.25? Should I keep it? It's a better way to be in it because you're moving with higher highs and higher lows. I don't want to be buying lower highs and lower lows. So that's the idea right now. And then we can talk about it again next week. But that's the way I'm looking at it. So folks, just stay, uh, stay tuned. You've got good programming here. Check out my webinar coming up Tuesday, the 19th, 5 o'clock to 6.30 for subscribers. You can become a subscriber. You get my service for a month free because you can get your money back if you're unhappy. And in the meantime, back to the rest, we have had some good buyers. We use all these techniques, left side, right side, price, time match. We were in this BDSI, this bio uh, delivery delivery service. The reason why we, there it is at peak D, we're in at 517, it went to 645. Some things have worked very nicely, other things haven't quite worked out as well. But I have very tight stops, one to two percent stops, so we either get taken out and then it works or it doesn't.